So guys, welcome back to another video. Now in this video, we're gonna be covering the topic of dating apps. And I'm pretty excited to put this video together, mainly because I see a lot of people kind of struggling with this area, asking a lot of questions in certain Telegram groups. And so the information that I give you in this video should allow you to kind of produce your own systems, innovate, uh, and really master dating apps. So as I say, I see a lot of questions in Telegram channels and, and stuff like that about this topic. And quite often people asking questions will just get shot down by people that know their methods um, and now they hold some kind of leverage and have some kind of knowledge of a certain area that others don't have. And now they think they're Elon Musk, which isn't the case. Dating apps are pretty simple and straightforward. And I'm gonna show you that in this video. So before I get into the video, just an intro to myself. My name's Ollie. I've been in the online space for years now, running multiple different businesses, including a six-figure SMMA and now a successful OnlyFans management agency. And that is why you should feel comfortable consuming this information because I've either done or I'm literally doing what you are trying to do. Now, I obviously make YouTube content as well. So if you like the kind of content that you see on this channel, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video and then you will see more of it. It makes my channel do better and will encourage me to make more content like this. Before we get into dating apps and how to actually do it, I kind of want to break down and get you to think about how they actually work so you can understand the system before trying to replicate a process. There's two ways to basically run a dating app profile. Now, I want you to think that you're just a, a normal guy trying to get their end away and you're going to be using dating apps and how you might actually do that. So you can understand the process. Now there's basically two ways to do it. You either get a mobile phone and set, set up a dating app profile on a mobile phone. You know, you might set it up at home on Wi-Fi and start swiping out and about and so on. So that's one way. Now, the other way that you might do it is you might log into a browser, load up Bumble, load up Tinder and log into a browser on your laptop or whatever and set up a profile that way. Now, first of all, the vast majority of people are gonna be using mobile and a very small percentage are gonna be using desktop. So this instantly means that when trying to replicate this process at scale and you know use black hat methods to promote your OnlyFans, the safest and most common way to do it in the eyes of Bumble or Tinder or any dating app would be to do it through mobile. So instantly doing it through mobile is gonna have a higher trust score than through browser. So I really want you to let that inform your decision when, when creating your system. If you do it through browser, it might be easier to do, but you're gonna get far more bands. If you do it through mobile, it might be a little bit more complex to do, a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna have a much longer life expectancy of the dating app profile itself. And there isn't just one way to do it. So there isn't just one way to replicate this process on mobile um, and there's not just one way to replicate the process on desktop. Now I'm gonna show you the multiple different ways to do it because it will allow you to make an informed decision on your own on which method is best for you or maybe multiple methods will be best for you and you won't put all your eggs in one basket and you'll try multiple different systems and so if one of your system goes down, you don't completely lose that traffic source. So the first method that we're gonna talk about is the mobile method. Now, there's a lot of people, I've seen a lot of content on it, talking about physical phones. So they'll get a physical iPhone um, and set up a dating profile account and start swiping for their, for their creator. Now, having said the information that I did a minute ago, you might think, well, this is probably the best option, it's the most legit, it's the most similar to how you'd actually run it if you were a real person which is true, that is one of the benefits of running a physical phone farm. It is much less detectable that you are doing anything, you know, illicit, like that you're not supposed to be doing. However, the cons of this is it's far more expensive. Um, it's a lot more difficult. You can't outsource this work to someone in a different country. You could potentially, but the logistics of that would be a nightmare. It is the most difficult method to do at scale. It's the most expensive method to do at scale. And to be honest, it's completely unnecessary. And if you're watching content and someone is pushing you to create physical phone farms, 
I would be a little bit skeptical because it just doesn't make sense. It might have made sense, you know, a while back before people had the knowledge on how to do it in other ways. But now at this point in time, if people are still advocating for it, like I say, I'd be skeptical. Anyhow, I'm gonna to explain to you the process of doing it from a physical phone, just so you have an understanding of it. And if you do wanna pursue this route, you can, but I, like I say, I wouldn't advise it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our phone. Doesn't really matter if it's an iPhone or an Android. Um, it just needs to be able to run Tinder. When I did run physical phone farms, we used iPhone 8s, but you don't have to. Now, let's go through the process of doing it. So we've got a brand new phone. What are we gonna do? We need to get a new SIM card for it with, with data. And what we wanna do is basically change the geolocation of the phone and have it in our desired location and also change proxy to match that. We then need to set up the profile as normal and the account is there and live and ready to go. Like I said, the longevity of this kind of account is gonna be not much longer than the other ways just because it is the most natural way to set up the account. So that's basically how you do it. Anyone can do that. A chimp can do that. Um, it's the first method that I did. I am a chimp. It's not a bad option, I guess, if you're just starting out and you wanna test and see how the platform works and potentially test out your funnel from it. But to get any like serious level of traffic, it's gonna be a nightmare. The next way that we wanna look at is still running from a physical phone, but we wanna think about how we can kind of reduce the logistical workload of doing this. If running profiles from physical devices is the best option, how can we replicate this without having to invest money in multiple mobile phones and, and, and so on and, and so forth? How can we replicate that? Well, the way in which we do that is not by using iPhones, but is by using Android phones. And the reason for using Android is because you have a lot more freedom in the kind of apps that you can download onto the phone and the kind of changes that you can make to the phone iPhone is really, really difficult to do anything outside of what Apple want you to do, if that makes sense. It's near enough impossible. In the old days, you could jailbreak your phones and stuff like that. Now it's not so simple. I think you probably still can do it, but it's not. It's outside of my realm of expertise. So we're gonna look at Android, because it's much more simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our Android and we're gonna download something called an app cloner. And what this will effectively allow us to do is download the desired app that we want, whether that's Bumble or whatever, and it will allow the app cloner to then replicate copies of this individual app. And so you might be thinking, well, aren't all the different, you know, Bumble profiles all gonna be running off the same device? Surely Bumble are gonna know because we're gonna have the same IP and, and everything like that, it's gonna be a mess, no. Because with these app cloners, depending on which one you go to use, um, test it out, see which one works best for you. But with these app cloners, you can change things like geolocation. You can add mobile proxies to them. And, and even some of them allow you to use a fake camera and allow you to use images to verify the profiles on Bumble. So this is actually probably the most powerful method or joint powerful method. Um, you can replicate the process of using a physical device as closely as possible. Um, with this method, it's a little bit more complex. It takes a little bit more of you know figuring out what works and what doesn't, but it but it is definitely definitely powerful. Once you get it to sort of a certain point, you know you can start looking at auto swipers and stuff like that on the phone as well, um, and really ramp up your efforts. Now, for those of you that don't like using mobile phones or you just want another method to replicate this exact same process, fine, here's another way to do it. So, whether you've got a desktop, whether that's Mac or Windows, you're gonna be able to replicate this exact same process on there. And the way in which you do that is using something like Bluestacks, an app emulator. And so what effectively you do is you recreate the app experience that you're having on the phone onto your desktop. So same thing again, download Bumble, download your app cloner, 
and then literally replicate this process on your on your computer. Your computer will think it's a mobile device or the app will think it's still a mobile device. It will work in the same way and you can just replicate this process. To do this, if you're on Windows, you should be able to download something like BlueStacks straight away. With Mac, you can't download their most recent um, version, which I believe is BlueStacks 5. So what you'd probably need to do is download something like Windows Parallels, run it from there, and then add BlueStacks and just replicate, replicate this process. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now the final method for those of you that are maybe a little bit intimidated by using app cloners and stuff like that, this method's for you because this method is a lot more simple. You know, it's pretty easy, really, really straightforward to do. Um, yeah, you can do this at a huge scale as well because it's quite quick to do. Um, however, the only downside to the method I'm about to tell you is account bans. This is going to be a solely desktop way of doing it. It's going to be the desktop profiles. And as I said earlier in the video, these have a much, much lower trust score. And so we're going to be dealing with that issue. That's a negative. The positive is we can make these profiles very, very quickly. So for the final method, it's going to be replicating the desktop profile version. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to download a multi-login software and do the exact same process basically that we've been doing on mobile. We're basically going to recreate profiles in different locations for your creator and really ramp up these efforts. I'm going to actually break down on the computer exactly how you can do this and walk you through exactly how to do this. The information that I give you in this walkthrough will then give you the knowledge on how to do it for your mobile devices as well, or it should, you should be able to piece the, you know, the dots together. Let's jump into the screen. So guys, we're in the desktop and we're going to run through how we got to this point with Bumble loaded up in the multi-login uh, browser. So the first thing we need to do is choose a multi-login browser. For the purpose of this video, I am using Dolphin. It doesn't mean you should use it. There's go login down here, Dolphin, Incognition. Test them all out. There's other ones as well. Test them out if you want to. Find out which one works best for you, which one you prefer, which one you have most success with and pick that one. Don't just do it because I'm doing it in this video. Um, yeah, just use your initi initiative. Once we've picked the multi-login software, we're gonna make a new browser. This new browser we're gonna name and in terms of the name we're gonna pick and, and so on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick create a name. Then we're gonna choose the reason for us having the browser, so dating apps or Bumble, whatever. And then we're gonna label the location as well. So it should say, for example, if it was me, it would say Ollie um, Bumble New York. Okay, just so it's clear and easy for you to understand what profile it is and so you don't get you don't lose track when you've got 50 different profiles for one person. Once we've done that and named it, we're gonna then set the location and change the proxy. Uh, in terms of proxy providers, which one should you use? Do your own research on that, test different ones out and find them. If I tell you the one I use, everyone watching this video will then use it and it will stop working for everyone. So go and find one that works for you, test it out, try it, see which one you have more success with pick that one, use Google, use uh, Telegram groups. But what I would say is you kind of want to use one that not everyone else is using, especially for the same reason. Um, obviously, if everyone's using it for the same reason, the risk of it getting banned goes up. Um, you can check out the, the fraud scores and stuff like that using Scamalytics um, and so on. So dig into that, test it out, see which one you have the most success with. Once we've done that, we'll load the browser profile up, we'll type in Bumble, we'll click join now or get started, whatever it is, and then it will load up this screen. Welcome, how do you want to get started? So the way in which we want to do this is use cell phone number. To verify it by cell phone number, what we're going to do is use a one-time SMS number provider. Uh, there's loads of them. There's one called SMS Man. Uh, there's one called Text Verified, which is what we're going to use in this video it's not the one I use normally, but it's just we had credit in the account. Um, and then we've got SMS PIN Verify, and there's a few others, and I'm gonna spend all day li listing them off. Um, so for this one, as I say, we're using Text Verified. Text Verified is actually relatively expensive, at 75 cent per number. There are cheaper options, uh, but 
it does actually have quite a good success rate. Now, let's type in the number 530321 Continue. So we're waiting for the text to come through. It should appear here. 103293. So we're going to pick my name, which is Oli. Um, I'm not going to give you my actual date of birth, but I'll just put something random in. Just make sure I'm over. Ooh. Over um, 18. I am a man. Right, we've just got two. Now, one thing to keep note is with photos and the selection of photos, you don't want anything to be too sexually explicit. And you basically want to make sure that the photos are not the same on each profile. Because when you're doing it at scale, if they keep seeing the same photo, they'll just ban or shadow ban the account straight away. So you either need a really wide range selection of photos, or you need to have the ability to be able to edit these photos. Um, you also wanna look at potentially removing metadata from photos as well, um, and that will help you avoid these kind of these kind of shadow bans. As I said, don't do anything too you know explicit um, on there. You know, some of the photos can be alluring, um, but they will just moderate your photos if they're too much. You know, you can even get bikini photos that are considered too much, uh, and they'll get and they'll get moderated. Is there anything else you need to take into consideration with the photos? Make sure you can see the model's face. Obviously, make sure she looks good. Um, very, very important. And then we're going to allow location access. It should come. It should be in New York, uh, based on the the proxy and so on. Cool. We'll just put everyone for the sake of this. There's your and there's your Bumble profile created. Obviously it's not verified yet and so on. Um, so we'll do that in just a second. One thing to keep into consideration as well is men's profiles are much more trusted than females profiles on Bumble. So if you have male creators, the likelihood of them getting banned once they're set up and verified is much, much lower and they will last a much longer amount of time. We've got male creators and female creators at my agency both using Bumble, female creators' accounts take a lot more maintenance and need redoing a lot more often as opposed to male creators. And that is because of the natural behaviours of men and women. Men are more likely to swipe more relentlessly than women. Women get more matches, swipe less, so on and so forth. Um, and so when we're actually using this to promote OnlyFans, the way in which we swipe is quite similar to how men naturally swipe um, that's one reason, plus there's a, a lot less men trying to do these systems as well. So that's another reason their accounts get banned less. Then we're going to look at verifying the profile. So we're just going to click verify your account. You can literally do this on Zoom with your creator. You can get them to log into the multi-login and be controlling their screen. And then you literally are just getting them to do this. So we're going to click verify now. Okay. So there you go. So we're going to go like that. I've got broken arms, so it's quite hard to actually get my hand up here, but we'll do my best. Why do I look cross eyed in that? Cool. Now it should go straight through. Um, the only time it doesn't go straight through is if it's difficult to actually work out that the photo you're using is the same as your creator. Okay, didn't like it. Doesn't think I look like my photos. Right. Let's give it a go. This can happen where you have to go back and forth. Doesn't normally take that many attempts, especially if you've got nice clear photos of yourself and you're doing the pose correctly. And then obviously you want to fill out the rest of the profile. 
Um, in terms of the about me, see, look, verified straight away. Perfect, well, second attempt. Normally I would suggest putting the about me section in first, then verifying it, because it can trigger a shadow ban once you then put this information in. But what we'd, we would do um, is you could put something simple like new in town. New in town, then you might put your Instagram handle and you really want to hide your Instagram pro handle. There's lots of ways to do it. You could put LG like that and then put your Instagram handle or you could put something like this. You could hide it that way. Use your fancy text generator. Um, you could watermark your photos. There's lots of different ways to do it. Test it out and find out a, w a way that works for you because they do patch this. And so something that works for a few days will then stop working. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't do it anymore anyway, but LG, you used to be able to do like that, doesn't work anymore. So just play around with it um, and you'll get there. Um, then you might want to put a call to action at the end directing them to, to that Instagram handle. Have a think, be creative. Don't just say I'm not here, here very often or anything like that. I actually think about how you could get them intrigued to visit the Instagram profile. Then obviously you've got basics, height. Just gonna add that in. What is your height? Five foot 11, yeah. Active, you're always going to want to put active, it's just more alluring than someone who isn't. Um, feel free to put that kind of stuff in. Depends on the age of the creator, if they are sort of that younger sort of demographic, then potentially you can put in college and stuff like that. That can work quite well, but obviously, if you've got a more mature creator and so on, you don't want to put that. So, we skip that for now. Do you drink? We tend to either go for rarely or socially. Socially is quite good. Um, do you smoke? Just put never. And what do you want from your date? We always go with relationship. Then in terms of children, don't really need to put that, put what you want. Doesn't really make, matter too much. And then the zodiac sign, make sure it's in line with the date of birth that you put in. Um, don't want any excuse for them to trigger any sorts of bans. I am an Aquarius, but I put a different date of birth and I can't remember what I chose, so we won't put that. I would definitely lean away from putting political leanings in. And I would also lean away from putting religion in. So that's everything. So that's set up. Profile's good to go. And we've got a profile. So once we set this profile up and it's ready to go, we can go back and if the account isn't shadow banned, you'll start generating likes. Only thing to take into consideration is this is about, it's probably the middle of the night, like early morning in the States from the time that I'm filming this video. So there might not be likes going straight through to the profile and potentially no one likes me anyway, who knows. Um, what we wanna do though, once we have worked out that the account isn't shadow banned, it is getting likes, it is getting matches, is we wanna be able to boost that process as much as physically possible. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna either buy Bumble Boost or Bumble Premium. It doesn't, they both work, let's put it that way, but Boost is cheaper, Bumble Premium is probably quicker and more effective. I would say. And actually I've seen it last, make the account last longer from getting shadow banned actually. It's less likely on, on premium. It's not, it's not, definitely not gonna happen if you have premium. It does happen, it's happened to me many times, but um, it seems to last a tiny bit longer. And you're just gonna upgrade to Bumble Boost. Typically what we would like to do, or what we do is we just do it for a day and have it on recurring subscription. The reason that we have it set up like this is because if the account goes down, we haven't lost any money or anything like that. Now, when running 30, 40 different accounts, can't use the same, same card each time. So you have to figure out a way around that. 
Then once that is all set up and you can swipe as much as you want, um, it's time to really ramp the numbers up. And so what you want to do is probably swipe between 50-50 and 70-30, 70 right, 30 left, and start swiping and start proving that system. Before you wanna, you know, you automate and scale this sort of stuff up and getting teams to do all of this stuff for you, you wanna prove that this system works and you're not getting banned. So record your own data that you can then pass on to your own team to then fulfill this. Now to scale it up, you either are gonna do it yourself, um, which I wouldn't advise, you either are going to get a team member to do it, so you might hire someone, maybe in the Philippines where labor is cheaper, give them the sort of SOPs to do this and the, the standard operating procedures and let them work away. And the final option would be to create scripts and stuff like that, so it auto swipes for you. Um, I'm not gonna dig into that in this video, but that's just another option. In terms of how many matches you can get a day, results and stuff like that. So, it is pretty accurate actually, and it sounds like people are just pulling this number out of their head and saying 100 matches is a subscriber. It pretty much is, in most cases. Um, in terms of how many matches can you get a day from one of these accounts, we've really pushed it with some accounts. They will get banned if you do this, obviously, but we've done like up to a thousand matches on one account in one day, which is obviously translates to um, 10 subscribers. Do that 10 times, that's 100 subs in a day. Um, so it is powerful if you are going very, very heavy and aggressive on the amount of matches that you're, you're doing, the account will get shadow banned or banned completely. So just keep that into consideration. It's kind of a balancing act between getting as many subscribers as possible and not getting the account banned and you're just trying to sit somewhere in the middle of that and ride these accounts out as long as possible. However, the bans are inevitable and will certainly happen. If you get an account where it looks like this, for example, this might not be shadow ban, but you see where um, we're refreshing it and nothing is happening. Um, this, this looks like it's shadow banned. If you're swiping right and you're not getting any matches, especially if it's a female creator, um, you're not getting any matches at all, it's probably shadow banned. If you're swiping right, you're getting matches, but it's not, they're not appearing up here in your match queue or your beeline or whatever it's called, your shadow band. So I think that's pretty much it for this walkthrough. We'll head back to the main camera. So there you have it. There is the exact walkthrough of how to recreate this process across all those different devices. And there was a literal live walkthrough on how to do it on desktop. Now, I hope you found this useful. Some of you still might have some questions. I've given you the blueprint. You just need to use your um, noodle uh, and kind of piece any dots together that you, you know, you can't quite understand yet. Um, Google's your friend, Reddit's your friend. Go and search there first and try and figure it out for yourself. It'll be much more beneficial for you. You'll learn how to learn about these systems as well in case you face troubles that I can't help you with in the future. After you've done that, if you still have questions, I'm going to create a Telegram group and link it in the bottom of this video. Feel free to join that Telegram group and ask any specific questions that you have about this process and actually any relevant OFM OnlyFans questions at all really. So I'll link that below. Now I'm not sure if I highlighted in this video enough just how important dating apps are or how powerful they can be for you as an agency or you as a creator. They're insane and you will get an instant return on your time and money investment as long as you do it correctly and follow the systems that I've you know, laid out to you. They're incredibly powerful. It's one of the main methods we use to drive traffic to our creators only fans. We basically have TikTok and dating apps. They are the main, main ones. We obviously use Instagram and Twitter and Reddit and, and so on and so forth, but these are going to be the main, main drivers of traffic. And the beautiful thing about it is TikTok is very creator dependent. So creators have to be constantly creating the TikToks, whereas dating apps are very agency dependent. And this allows you 
both your creator and you as the agency to work very hard to drive masses amounts of traffic to the OnlyFans together. And if you face problems on one of these platforms, for example, TikTok, then it allows dating apps to kind of take over and pick up that weight. And the other benefit is it's instant, you know, infinitely scalable. So as long as you have images to create the profiles and money to create the profiles and buy virtual sims and stuff like that, you're fine. You can just create account after account after account after account. And money should never be an issue because if you're running these systems effectively, they should be effectively printing you money. Um, and that, that money investment should be made up almost instantly. Um, you literally need to get one subscriber from one account and it's paid for the account. So definitely take that into consideration and understand the powers of these systems. So that's it pretty much. As always, if you have any questions, please either ask them in the bottom of this video or send me a message on Instagram or join the Telegram and subscribe and like the video. As I said before, it really helps out. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in another video.